In this episode of Mind Pump, by the way, Mind Pump is the top fitness and health podcast in the world. We try to entertain you and trick you into learning awesome gotcha. fitness knowledge. This episode is a Q&A episode where we answer fitness questions asked by listeners like you, but we open the episode with an introductory introduction where we talk about current events, uh, we talk about our lives, sometimes we mention our sponsors, we have fun conversation. That was the first 43 minutes of this episode, so here's what went down in today's podcast. We started by talking about Spotify and how they are crushing right now uh, with subscribers and how they are treating their podcasters. Really, really yeah. good stuff. Then we talked about the silver, silver lining behind this coronavirus uh, situation. I talked about how uh, at first we told my daughter the Easter Bunny wasn't real, and then we had to backtrack because... <laughs> Big mistake. Yeah, she started crying. Yeah. Uh, I talked about Trump's daily briefings. If you're not watching these, you should because they're comedy, yeah. um, and it's actually helping them politically. Uh-oh. Uh, then we talked about the twins in India whose mom named them Corona and COVID. Why? What's going on here? Yeah. I don't know. And their daughter, Ebola. I talked about the... Human intuition during the plague. Uh, that was interesting. We talked about gloves and masks and how a lot of people are doing them wrong. Um, I talked about my favorite coronavirus conspiracies. Uh, we talked about strategies to helping with the stress and anxiety of what's going on right now. One thing that I personally do to help my body deal with the physical feelings of anxiety, you know, I'm a bit of a hypochondriac, so this is like a perfect storm for me. And when I get anxious, I can feel it. My hands get clammy. I get the faster heartbeat. I tend to feel frozen. Um, and so I need to calm the physical symptoms of anxiety so then I can deal with the mental ones. And one thing that I've personally been using is uh, really good quality, full spectrum hemp oil extract. So my favorite company is Ned. They make a great hemp oil extract. It's high in CBD, but it's also high in other cannabinoids. There is no THC or it's low enough to be able to be sold legally. But the way I feel after I take it, it's a powerful enzyolytic. It's like I'm taking an anti-anxiety substance. Substance. I feel calm. I feel good. Um, it's a great product. It's the best one that I've ever used. Um, and again, we are sponsored by them. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you'll get 15% off your first purchase. So here's what you do. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash Mind Pump. And again, you'll get 15% off your first purchase. Then we talked about coronavirus and boners. There's a hey, connection, I promise you. Of course there is. Then we And then we talked about a high-protein alcoholic beverage now that they're selling. Mm. Hmm. Then we got into the Dumb. fitness questions. First question, what type of lifter do we think is having the easiest time adjusting to at-home workouts? That was fun. Yeah. The next question, is blood flow restriction training safe during strength training? So this is a technique that you can use to send a loud muscle building signal with very, very light weight. So uh, because you're at home and your gym is closed, this may actually be an effective strategy for you. By the way, if you go on our Mind Pump podcast website, you could look at our show notes for this episode and we will post a video explaining how to do blood flow restriction training. Um, the next question is inserting isometric holds into the middle of a workout effective? So isometrics, tons and tons of value. We explain how to use them in that part of the episode. And the final question, this person is saying, can some foods that are prepared from scratch at home be considered, quote, processed foods? So we talk all about processed foods in that part of the episode. Also, this month... Maps Prime and Maps Prime Pro are both 50% off. Okay, so here's the deal. You're at home. Uh, you don't have access to a lot of equipment. This is an excellent time to work on mobility. Now, why is mobility important? Well, besides uh, you know, reducing your risk of injury and getting rid of pain, you improve your ranges of motion and your connection to your muscles so that when you finally do go back to working out like you did before, you're actually more effective. You're building stronger more muscle. Stronger than ever before. You're stronger. You're more stable. Better ranges of motion, build more muscle. We know this. And both MAPS Prime and Prime Pro have very strong correctional elements. So MAPS Prime is more dedicated to uh, teaching you how to prime your current workouts for your individual body, how to get the, the right warm-up to maximize the results of your workout. Prime Pro is totally correctional, 100%. So you go in there, you pick the joint and area you want to work on. Then you have... Uh, programs that teach you how to fix mobility issues for those specific areas, okay? 
You don't need any equipment for either program at all. By the way, if you're a personal trainer, you should have one of these programs, especially right now if you're training your clients virtually. You can use MAPS Prime or Prime Pro for 30 to 40 or maybe even hour sessions, train your clients virtually, bring them a lot of value. Again, both 50% off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. That's M-A-P-S-F-I-T-N-E-S-S-P-R-O-D-U-C-T-S.com and use the code PRIME50. That's P-R-I-M-E-5-0, no space for the discount. And it's t-shirt time. Ah, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Oh, yeah. We have Ooh, Dougie. four winners for iTunes, and we have three winners for Facebook. The iTunes winners are Gruntus, Darren Ambat, L-H-I-H, uh, sorry, L-H-I-H-14, and Feisty Wren. For Facebook, we have Sarah Bante, Matthew Schultz, Neha Ade. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Check, check, check. My check. One, two, three. Remember that song? I was sitting in the corner. I always That song always made me, you know what that song made me think? And I'm sure lots of other people think too, that they could just write a song and that anybody could write a song. Yeah, that and the Macarena. Uh, yeah. the I, the, at least the, the Macarena. Well, like a maca, like a, like a Macarena. <laughs> dude, remember when like everybody did that? Everybody. They still do. Grandma. Dude, you know, at my kids' little kids. At my kids' school dance, like my the father daughter dance and stuff. The they ma- brought it up? They always do the Macarena. Macarena's always up there. I know, wow. but your kids don't even know what that is. It was yes, before, they do. It was before they were born. They so know it school. because, okay. It's infamous. When you're a kid, remember when you were a kid and you went to like. Fun little dances in elementary school or whatever. Didn't they always play that one song? Yeah, the chicken. Okay. Yeah, why? Because it's a, it's all organized. Yeah, it's like a wedding a wedding uh, song. Yeah, Macarena sure. will be with us forever. Yeah. I hate music that like makes you do things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you have like, to do you're something. You're fucking for it. assaulting me right now. Like, why do I have to be a part yeah. of this? What's there's another song that's like uh, I'm already a bad dancer. That makes me a really bad dancer yeah, too. You like, can't even follow instructions. Yeah, like yeah. line dancing. Yeah, Everybody already like, knows what to do. Yeah. It takes, <laughs> slide, slide, slide. It takes me what? six beers to find the beat in the first place. And then, <laughs> then I gotta yeah. follow some routine I didn't memorize. Hold on a second. <laughs> right. Hold on a second. Somebody in this room has been line dancing. Yeah. Who's done it? Did that, was that obvious? I haven't. You've done it, Justin? Yeah, dude. What did you do? I was at like a... Did you go to Saddle Rack or whatever it's called? Yeah. Was it the I think rack? it was It was either there in Chicago. I think it was Saddle Rack. Yeah, I think it was Saddle Rack. Because we were, you know, single at the time. And that's where you go. Because that's, you know... That's Bro, if you, have you ever been to a... chicks are. Yes. Have you ever been to a country concert? No. Oh, my God. And I'm so not country either. It was so That's why you don't like country. You like country just for that. So so Jessica is a huge country fan yes. and would love for me to go to a country concert, but now she's going to hear this podcast. And then now <laughs> yeah. if I say I want to go, <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she's like, right. no, no. You can take coming. us later. Now you don't have to go. No, you're not coming now. Yeah. yeah exactly. Really? Yeah. Is, there, is, there more, is there more pretty uh, uh, people? Yeah, they're phenomenal. Really? Beats yeah. every other, yeah, every every other, other genre. genre. Yeah, exactly. Really? Oh, yes. I wonder why. Well... Uh, good wholesome values yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't yeah, know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> produces good wholesome bodies <laughs> i don't know i don't know what the math is there but uh, so funny. <laughs> definitely works in that direction That's so funny dude yeah so I, I would love to have seen you line dance oh yeah it was silly it was i mean of course i i'm the asshole that like you know tries for a while and then turns it into a michael jackson move you know, and everybody's what the just fuck don't follow doing? directions. Yeah, I don't. I'm I doing my I own can't thing. Help it. I hey, can't help speaking it. of music, you know that uh, Spotify. We've been talking about Spotify for years now. Uh, last year, officially, the the numbers came in. It was the number one uh, streaming service in the world. So uh, surpassed all the other ones. Crushing. And, wow. Yeah, and then they just Spotify. attached to uh, Apple Watch's API. So what's you API could, mean again? I don't fucking know what the acronym stands Gosh, for. Do you, know, do you know what it is, Doug? I know uh, what it means. I don't know. What we it even we even researched that ahead of this. Yeah. App programming interface. Or Applied something like that. programming interface. It basically means like it basically means that your your cool thingamabob can 
can, can <laughs> communicate to their thingamabob. Oh. Yeah, you can have That's the same experience on that device, right. basically. When, when Adam so, talks all scientific, yeah, that was <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. they talk to each other. Yeah, so now you can, which you would think that would be, uh, I mean, uh, you would think that Apple wouldn't allow that, right? Because Apple would want it to it's go competitive. to the, yeah, it's competitive, right? You, but, you know, they, they have an, what what's called an open API that allows someone like Spotify to connect their app to that, so it's now connected. So you could, if you have an Apple Watch, you can say whatever to it. And That's definitely rare because they've always, uh, you, you know, like uh, Google, for instance, has been really good about that open source, open API. Like not everybody Apple. can not Apple at all. Like they've always kept everything in house. So that's wow. interesting. Wow. Yes, yeah, so that's going to crush. That's going to make yeah. them crush. Oh, even it's, more. Oh, it's a so, better experience. Have you guys listened to podcasts on Spotify? So it's what, awesome. What makes it a better experience? That's uh, just the way that it's organized, and you could find things easier, and just like I, I, I just enjoy the the, the actual like interface. Of what it. is the share of? Because I know uh, iTunes still. Well, last time I checked, uh, dominated the total amount of podcast well, listeners. Is there, are they? Is it? Is it starting to change? No, it's not that much. Where it still dominates right now, but I mean, I think we have a good example. We, I'd say, probably twenty percent or thirty. percent are now coming from Spotify, Doug. Would you say somewhere around there about twenty percent? Be good guess. I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, mm. it's about twenty. <laughs> I am. So it's about twenty percent. So about twenty percent of our listeners are coming now from Spotify, which has been, uh, you know, growing ever since podcasts had dropped on there. So I think, like to, to Justin's point, I just think the UI for Spotify is so user friendly. You know, they just also released um, a like whole kids channel. Wait, hold on a second. Let me go back for a second. Okay, so Apple has iTunes, yeah. right. but their Apple Watch is going to connect with yes, Spotify. That's why it's I a big know, deal. It's, it's crazy. But they haven't. They have iTunes. But they for probably pro have both though. They probably have. Yeah, like, they have the Apple Podcasts yeah. as well, oh. like as an option. Wow, mm -hmm. that's kind of weird. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, people are demanding hedging their bets. Well, I mean, I, th I think they're demanding it, right? Consumers that have Apple Watches still love Spotify. Well, not only that, because they do have a streaming uh, side of their business too that I guess hasn't been doing well. The Apple Music, I don't think I don't know anybody that uses mm -hmm. that. So. No. And then you said something about kids programming. So now Spotify has a uh, like a kids whole channel. So I actually downloaded that. We, we've been driving. I mean, you mean like I, music? Yeah. So it's like uh, like specific to them. Like you know how like on Netflix right now you can go. To, you could log in under kids, and then it's like nothing but kid stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can log into a, uh, a, a part of Spotify that's all kids, and then they have playlists that are like I totally took. We took Max. Max so Max has been battling a fever. He's teething uh, right now, and this uh, the, these teeth that are coming in now are worse than the first ones that came in. And uh, we actually hit 104 over the weekend, Man. which yeah, that that scared Katrina a little bit. I she come. Running in the room, wake me up. Like, oh my God, he's 104 right now, and you know, doing the whole, you know, cold, cold or cool bath and rags, and trying to get it down. And uh, this whole weekend has been was crazy. You know, it's one of those weekends where I'm sure every parent can relate. Oh, yeah. Where you think, oh, it's the worst. You look Just at in each the other, trenches. Go, like, you oh, sure? You sure you wanted to have a kid? Right? Right? Do you really? Right. Want so how vulnerable yeah, do you it feel? It gets tested. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, um, it's. It's crazy. It's uh, one of those weekends, too, that it reminds me, uh, and I was telling the guys this before you walked in, Sal, I was talking to Justin and Doug about, you know, it for sure the part of, if not a large part of the, the feeling that you have about having a child that's like so rewarding and amazing and everybody says you don't know what it's like until you have one, blah, 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 blah has to be the adversity that you have to overcome. <laughs> yeah. it's I mean, incredibly hard. Like when yeah. I when I think yeah. of the, the things That's that I've, I've accomplished in my life, some of the things that took the most time and dedication and sacrifice, uh, example for the listeners that, that know I competed, like that was a long journey to get to that point and a lot of, you know, passing on fun weekends and being disciplined about what they, and part of what felt so amazing to finally go pro was, I know it was all the shit of course. that I went through to get to that point. If because, it was easy, it wouldn't have been. Well, because you you get there and you know, like, oh, some other motherfucker would never be able to do this, you sure, know. Sure. And that's just, I feel like that kind of goes through your mind is like, yeah. and it's not that uh, the because a lot of people can you know quote unquote raise a kid, but it's at those moments that really test you as a parent on how you handle those situations. Right. Like I know for sure. So he it started on Thursday, went all the way till today, right? So we we've been going through this for four days of these these fevers and and he is just he's miserable he hasn't been like this at all it's like the worst one of the worst stretches we've had and the thing that i think more so than just getting through that is also how you and your partner handle each other through mm -hmm. that situation because uh i, I mean 
I ate like crap. I didn't get to exercise this weekend. I didn't get no sleep. And, and so same thing for Katrina. And I know there's got to be several moments during that time where she's irritated or frustrated. I'm irritated, or frustrated, but yet never allowing that to to blow up mm-hmm. or get mad at each Lash other. Lash out or anything. And, and yeah. being still in a, in the heat of all that and going through that with the stress and, and, and the fear of what's going on with his fever and the it's, that's a, that's the big one is dealing with the vulnerability that you're you know this is a like you're, you're invincible until you have kids you don't realize that right. until you have them oh yeah and you know and I think back to like you know my 20s and uh, the the different uh, partners that I had like man uh so you know, many guys <laughs> just, <laughs> just, so many dudes so, just, so many yeah. And I just can't imagine uh, no rose for you having somebody <laughs> who uh, at all didn't have the same self awareness um, as I do in those types of situations yeah. because I could just see I, I instantly just think of like my parents or other relationships that I know where God it all it wouldn't be it wouldn't it, it wouldn't be out of the normal for Katrina to snap at me because she didn't sleep all night long. You know, and she needs a little if break. If it was like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then for you to respond to that, and then now the kid sees that and feels that because yeah. they're around that. And so I just, I think of things like that, and I, I think that the the things that I are, I'm, I find the most challenging are those moments, mm-hmm. and still. It's not about just getting through those moments. It's about how you handle those moments. And so we had another one of those this weekend. And you know, I just didn't you know didn't get a chance to get my workouts Yikes. in. So are you so you you you're putting on now kids music from Spotify? Oh yeah, so that was the reason. What why the hell do they play on there? Uh, you know, like, like the, Baby Shark. Yeah, yeah. They, oh. I mean, every every nursery rhyme song you could think, and from all age groups that you could think of. So if you're like you know mine at his age, like ACDC with wind chimes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I find that. Scene. I was no, looking at it. ACDC with wind. ACDC with wind chimes. No, you don't. Is that yeah, real? Yeah, and also Metallica. Yeah. What? Yeah, the whole Black Album. <laughs> Did, I would uh, so with, listen to that. Well, yeah, with white wind chimes and everything else. Yeah. <laughs> the kids are like, yeah. I love this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Dirty <laughs> deeds. <you know. laughs> oh my God. It's, it's, like, bro, it's, like, uh, it's weird. But kids' we, songs are the ones that stick in your head the most. Oh, they it's are. so, can be so Because they just re- re- repeat it like crazy. Oh. So we put it on. So this weekend, uh, you know, like Katrina and I are, are considering uh, moving to like the Gilroy, Morgan Hill, San Martin area, which is just a little south of where we're at right now. And and so I said, you know what? Like we've been stuck in this house all day. He's finally his fever is finally kind of like lowered a little bit. I'm like, let's let's just go for a drive. Let's just go. Let's get in the car and let's just drive for a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is funny to think that we No, would... we did that. We had to go for like especially because it's raining, you know, and yeah. like you can't be Walking you can't go the, somewhere uh, to go to another place where you're not allowed, right? So uh, you just got to go for a drive. So we just took even the dogs, we took them in. They're all like trying to get out and we're like, "No, this is we're cruising." You know. <laughs> they didn't get it or anything. Dude, I had to I have to bring this up cuz I don't know if you guys know about this phenomenon or not or if this is like spread to to San Jose area or not if it's just like local in my area, I looked on uh, next door, so you know that, uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that whole that. platform that so somebody on there was posting was like, you know, complaining about all the howling and everything at night at like eight o'clock, like sharp. And this has been happening apparently. Th- there's just been like, I don't know whose idea it was or not, but it's spread where everybody at eight o'clock, like people, yeah, like howl like animals outside their window. What? what? Yes, dude. And like, we, me and Courtney didn't believe it. And then we were like, we set an alarm and we timed it out. And then we like opened the window and it was raining and everything. We're listening out there. And sure, sure shit, dude. It, like out in the distance, you could hear like, you it was like some like person doing it. What? That's a great. And I was like, I this is the last. So we had, so we got the kids and everybody. We even got the dogs, <laughs> you know, starting to do it because we were doing it. I, that's a, such a Santa Cruz thing. Uh, it is. <laughs> that is a Santa yeah. Cruz thing. Bunch you know, of furries. We're just sitting out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Finally. Eating oh. out of bowls. Yeah. Because what's becoming popular over here is what Sal brought up um, the other day about how what they were doing in Italy where people are like going on their balconies and singing. Yeah. So oh, more, that's, see, that makes more sense. Right. More and more neighborhoods are starting to do that where someone's doing like a live uh feed of like a DJ playing or something, then they're just playing music and then everyone's like singing the same song or listening to the same music out in their on their apartments and stuff like oh, that. That's so great. You're seeing and hearing yeah. more of that, but the howling well, we is We need like, to spread the howling. <laughs> Eight o'clock, everybody, let's do this. We've just been what we've been doing is we've been driving to friend and family's houses and just literally driving up by up to the house or whatever. Not on the driveway, but staying in the road, but close enough to the 
to the sidewalk so that we're not blocking traffic. And you just call them up and you open your window. They stay at their doorway. So they're literally like 30 feet away. And you just say hi to them and, hey, what's going on? How you doing? And, <laughs> it, you know, when you see people in per- – this is – I swear to God, I'm learning so much about how much I value that human contact because I don't have – much of it right oh, now. It oh, it's it what I good. it's what I told you the other day that um, you know my my, my renewed uh, sense of faith in humanity is just watching. Uh, I I've never seen so many people in the Bay Area. Obviously, if you're I think if you're from like the Midwest and, and other places, other states, that yeah, I think they're, are, they're more friendly. Yeah, that are they're used to being yeah, friendly. People are assholes. The Bay Area is yeah. just like you know I and I grew up small town, so I know what it's like to like grow up in a town where like everybody you pass, you know, and you say hi, and it's like very friendly like right. that. Then you come to the Bay Area and it's all about like, how can you get somewhere as fast yes. as you can? And anyone gets in your way, get you're pissed. Way. Nobody makes eye contact. Nobody waves. Like it's just, it's, th- it's part of how it is over here. And uh, it's just, it feels like small town right now. When I walk in my neighborhood and I walk by somebody, it's like they smile and they wave. Isn't that and, beautiful? Oh, it is. It's a, yeah. it's It really is. It's nice to see that that once we all get shook up, we all kind of wake the fuck up a little mm-hmm. bit. You know? I've never had conversations with my neighbors, ever, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ever. Now I'm I having, know. now we're going on walks and I see them and I'm like, hey, how are you hanging in there? And we have like, a, you know a three minute conversation or whatever. And then I, you know, I continue with my walk that never used to happen before. I'm seeing more and more of that. It's nice. It's nice to know that when shit starts to get hard, Mm. that people, you know, one, one thing that a lot of people do is they try to kind of work together to self, to comfort each other. You know, like we're all in this. It'll be interesting Mm. if they keep this up, right? It'll be interesting if we all, dude, I think that what we're going to see, I think we're going to, I think it's going to be very interesting when all of this is all over. There's going to be a creative explosion is what I think. I think there's going to be a creative explosion. I think when we're all allowed to, you know, when when the coast is clear and we can all go to the mall and restaurants, I bet you people are going to fucking celebrate. They're going to want to hug each other. I'm going to want to talk to strangers. I bet there's going to be all kinds of. Yeah. Well, I see it because dude, we've like, even with with my kids, I just noticed it. they want to like draw comic books. They want to like build stuff. They want to, and I'm right there with them, like creating things and it's sparking all these ideas and cool stuff. And it's like, it'll be rad to see a bunch of innovative things come out of this. You know, something on the positive side of it. And for my kids, because you know, schools, I I don't think we talked about this yet. School's done for the year in California. I know, dude. They're not going back to school it's crazy t- till next year um and so my kids now i can see at first they were like cool or whatever but now i'm starting to see that they want to zoom or facetime their friends yeah or- this is the first time i've ever heard my kids like totally miss school yeah. they're like i miss school and i, I like recorded it <laughs> i'm gonna fucking blackmail them 100 percent. Yeah. what a lesson right yeah oh you miss school now huh well Ooh. because you hated it so much now they took they got rid of it for the year <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> maybe next you year you change your mind <laughs> <laughs> but we- <laughs> better appreciate it dude i didn't tell you guys so <laughs> so my uh you know easter's coming up right so yeah. we do the whole Easter Bunny thing. Do you guys do that? Where the Easter Bunny brings a, you know, uh, a basket kind of loosely. I mean, okay. it's not it's not like Santa Claus. So we do it, right? The Easter Bunny brings a, a basket and whatever. Anyway, my son's fourteen. We, we more do like Jesus, you know? <laughs> what does he bring? Little, yeah, yeah, he brings salvation, uh, life. Yeah, yeah. 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 He came back from the dead. You don't get toys. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't get, a bunny, but you get yeah. salvation. Yeah. Yeah. No, so we do the Easter Bunny thing, right? Kids wake up in the morning. They got a basket with some goodies or whatever. And so my son's fourteen, way too old for that. He knows that he knows the whole deal. My daughter's 10, which is she's probably a little too old now, right? So the other day she was at, at home with her mom. And uh, so I get this call from, from my ex and she's like, and I can hear my daughter in the background crying. I'm like, what happened? She goes, she goes, well, she came downstairs and she said to me, is the Easter bunny real? And she said, well, what do you think? And she goes, well, I don't know. I don't think he's real because I, I don't, I can't, you know, I'm asking for this thing, but you guys are telling me that the Easter Bunny can't get it, and it's because it's sold out. There's this thing she wanted; it was sold out. I like, so I don't think it's real. <laughs> so she thought, what a great opportunity to tell her the whole deal. Now she's ten, right? So yeah. she's like, well, no, yeah. the Easter Bunny's <clears throat> Easter Bunny's not real. And my daughter apparently was test like just wanted confirmation, like that it, that it was real. She looked at her and she's like, he's not. That's not the answer. I she wanted. goes, then Santa Claus isn't real. The oh. tooth fairy. She's oh, like, my no. life is a lie. Oh, no. <laughs> and she was crying. So backtracked. She oh, had to backtrack. No. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, well, well it's kind of true. Yeah. She's like, if you believe he's real, then he's real. And she's like, no, you said he's not. <laughs> so I had to get on the phone. 
<laughs> back and forth or whatever. So uh, Easter money's still real. Oh, dude, no, <laughs> like seriously, that's a serious conversation. Like we've had to have that with uh, Ethan because he figured it out real fast. Yeah. Like he's like a little sharp one, you know? And so I was like, we were still trying to play it off as long as we could and we couldn't. So we had to end up like adopting him to to become Santa Claus. So we're like, we gave him the responsibility. So he can keep uh, So he can it. keep, yeah, yeah he's, keep quiet about it to uh, Everett because like Everett still like completely believes. Yeah, well, and then I had that conversation. I'm going to have that conversation obviously with my daughter because I think she's being blissfully ignorant. I honestly think she knows. Right. But she, but doesn't, she wants to hold on to it. She wants to hold yeah, on to it. It's so, fun, dude. Why so, Why give it up? So I want to tell her, you know, when, when she finally comes to me and say, like, all right, I know. I'm going to be like, look, you get to like still get Easter Bunny and Santa Claus stuff because you have a baby sibling that's about you know it's gonna be born right, so right. that was me i was the oldest i got santa claus gifts forever yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean I'm like 17 years old so oh, i go downstairs yeah. what santa claus give me did you guys see the uh easter eggs that glow in the dark no, no. so that was a pivot by somebody right they uh, obviously everyone's going to be in their homes for easter and you normally be out with family just so they make these Easter eggs that glow in the dark. And the idea is to turn your lights off in your house and hide them throughout the house. Mm. Oh, that's so a cool you, idea. I know. I it thought makes that, them easy to find, though. I, that's know, right? what, I, I thought the same thing. When you, <laughs> but oh, not man. if you can... Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this makes it easier. Yeah, what the hell, man? We're not, everything's so easy for our kids these days. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. Here's a trophy. You definitely want to be able to find that, though, because there's nothing worse than like hiding an egg in your house. I give not- my kids riddles. You know, Here, read this fucking... <laughs> Riddle and figure out where the Easter eggs are. Like it says, four I feel words. Like you really do that. Yeah, yeah, I don't get this. Well, add the words up, correspond them to numbers, uh, figure out the. Yeah. Anyway, it's funny. Hey, so I'm I was cracking up the other day because uh, so you know how every day uh, Trump comes out and does his daily coronavirus sure. briefings or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so his approval ratings are higher than they've ever been, and the Democrat, right now they are. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and part of it is is during a, a national emergency, we tend to rally behind our our leader, especially if they appear to be leading, which he does. He seems to be. He appears to be leading, right? You can you can see the people around him respect him, even the uh, you know what's his name, Doctor Fauci or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, tends to defend him or whatever. But I'm laughing because he's getting so much airtime every single day. Oh, yeah. And the Democrats are getting zero airtime. Oh, they didn't account for that, huh? No, no they're fucked. Oh, man. They're, they're trying to do, like, web videos, and but they're terrible at it. Biden did one that came out just Oh, carbon. I saw that. It was all choppy and, like, uh, scrambled. There. So he's getting so much free airtime, and it's becoming like a, like a political gift. To him. Really? Yes, wow. because every single day he's on the news. He's talking to you. He's a, he's not talking about electing anybody. He's just talking. He's appearing like, here's what we're doing. Right. I'm in charge. Here's the deal. This sucks or whatever. Motivate you. You know, give you hope. And then when he fucks with reporters, that tends to people think he's a dick, but people think like it. Mm-hmm. When he does that, I don't know if you guys have seen some of the stuff he says to reporters. Oh, I think it's hilarious. Well, right, oh, and when God. he's he's directly doing it, they can't like alter like little sound bites of like one thing and put it like out of context. Like the, you actually see what he's saying like, every day. Too, every so. day now he's getting tons and tons of views, and it's just become free. You know, free political advertising for him. Now, do you? What's your? So interesting. What is your theory is on like? Uh, does it matter if what happens to the economy or the total amount of deaths when the when the coronavirus has started to subside? Does you think that matters in his reelection whatsoever? No, I think I, I, I like I said before. <clears throat> Um, in when everybody's worried and everything's uncertain, we tend to rally behind um, what's familiar. And he's been the president for four years. He's he's re- getting uh, he's running for re-election. So it's either the person we know and that we're comfortable with and that we've been watching go through this stressful situation and talking to about us every day. Or put somebody completely or new. put someone totally different. Um, so, it, so I don't. I mean, doesn't actually to be honest with you, it really doesn't matter who was in office right now. They would be hard to beat because of what's yeah, going on. Now, if feel. shit goes good, he looks good too. Because now he looks like he's, you know. Oh yeah, there's no doubt. There's no doubt if at, when this all subsides, if the United States ends up percentage wise, uh, the death of the coronavirus is lower or better and, than. Other- and the other thing too is attacking him right now, which is what you're supposed to do, right? And you're in, with politics when you're running against someone. It looks in poor taste. It oh, looks yeah. bad yeah, because you're attacking like our. Right, it's our, it's our president right now, and, and shit's and, hard. And yeah, and it's a very hard time. This is not the time to be. I don't care if who like who he is. Right? Yes, you know, you have to be supportive of what. We're going That's through, what right? I'm saying. Yeah, it yeah. looks really bad to not be supportive. 
supportive and to counter him right now because yeah, it's a tough place for Democratic Party to to you know, navigate. They're screwed. Yeah, they're they're in a really really tough place. So and it's funny to watch because I'm watching these some of these daily briefings and I'm laughing because I because he's such a he you know say what you will about the guy but he knows how to use the media very very well. Like mm-hmm. I, I remember when he ran uh, the first time, you know, he did this one this one time he told uh, reporters, he said, tune in, I'm going to reveal the truth about, uh, you know, President Obama's uh, oh, citizenship. I remember, I remember, remember when that was a big yeah, conspiracy? He was challenging that. Yeah, and everybody's that. like, oh my gosh, you know, Trump's going to say something stupid or whatever. Did he leave it at the very end too? So <laughs> they, they, all the news networks were recording him and he basically did like a campaign, you know, speech. And then at the very end, one of the reporters like, hey, weren't you going to say something? He's like, oh yeah, he was born in America or something. And he left. <laughs> he got a bunch of free airtime. I thought it was the smartest thing I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. Anyway, uh, hey, so speaking of which, uh, this is true now. There actually are, there actually is uh, twins that were born in India that were named after the coronavirus. What? Wait, what do you like? COVID uh, kid? Yeah. So one, one, there were twins. They were born in India. I feel like this is a dad joke. No, this yeah, is real. I was like, no, okay, this is yeah. real. One was named Corona and one was named COVID, a uh, boy and a girl. Born on March 27th. Who to, does that? To Preeti and Vinay Verma in the Indian state of uh, Chhattisgarh. I think I said that right. Wow. I know, right? <laughs> Name your kids after a virus. After like a name. Like, that's so weird. Yeah, meet like, my why? Son. Here's my son, Bubonic. Yeah, yeah exactly. My, and my daughter. Somebody was going to do it, though, right? I know. Yeah. I was the fir- those are the first ones that we, uh, that we know about. Ebola, get over it. Speaking of the bubonic plague, um, I-, I was just thinking the other day, because I-, I was like just reading about like the plague and how bad that was. That was terrible, right? Killed like a third of the, of the, of the world. Totally different situation than we're in now. But did you guys, have you guys ever seen pictures of what the doctors in the day war uh during the bubonic plague you've never seen their masks no uh no is this okay so this is totally different but like i i know that they had something with the grim reaper like had some like uh, i don't know if they use that as like a symbol for like the plague or, or whatever but i don't know about that but i do know and it's doug maybe you're are you looking it up right now to see what the uh, the plague doctors were okay have you guys seen oh those yeah, 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 yeah yeah okay yeah. yes so that right that there is creepy as hell. So, yeah. So that was it. Was you see that in scary movies? It's called a bird mask, and this is what doctors during the time used to wear to visit uh, plague victims. And it was a big mask. It covered their face, yeah. and they had this long beak at the end of it. And what they would do with the beak is they would put uh, uh, like uh, flowers or oils in there because the belief was this is before. Remember, this is before we knew about germs, bacteria, viruses. Their in, the intuition was that the smell of the plague was causing uh, oh, people wow. to get infected. And so this mask incidentally probably saved a lot of people's lives because it- It covered their uh, respiratory- Kept their face yeah. oh, far their enough away or whatever. Yeah, from, from people with the plague. How crazy is that? They didn't, we didn't know anything about germs or anything, but we kind of intuitively knew that smelling- People how, or being close or enough breathing to breathing it in. How yes. bizarre and creepy. Like you're on your deathbed and then that guy comes to that show up. Shows up. Like, yeah, this crow faced yeah. guy. Yeah. Dude, I, you know what? That, that I'm brings, hallucinating. Yeah, that brings uh, up something else. Like I noticed just driving around, we did this like whole, uh, like we were just driving around just to get out of the house and we noticed all these people like wearing their masks still in the car with their gloves driving on the, the <laughs> steering wheel with their gloves on the steering wheel. Okay, now think about this. And I've seen this too, like people eating food with their gloves still on. Like you're doing it wrong, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. like yeah. there's a way you, you have to like discard your your gloves because now they're contaminated. Right. Okay, and now you can go back to your real hands, and, and, you know, and get back to life. Like take your gloves off, take your mask off. You know, when you're not around people or, or around things that are going to expose you. But it's just hilarious. Oh, that me. is. Fun. Yeah, I've seen the same thing too. Like I carry a so I carry the the gloves, rubber gloves, box of them in all my cars right now. And to me, I think one of the of all the places, the two places I think that I'm uh, most susceptible to catching something right is gas station pump mm. and uh, ATM right. If you're yeah. or bank stuff, you're doing anything like sure. that. So that's for. I mean, you take. Yeah, I have one in my truck. Just yeah. For that. As soon as you get out, you put them on. I go over, pump the gas. As soon as I'm done pumping the gas, hang up the thing. I throw them away in the trash. Yeah, you peel the, them off. Yeah, peel them off and then get back in your car. Yeah. So, so what <laughs> yeah. I did is I bought the thick rubber, the the thick like latex re- reusable ones because they're running out of these disposable ones. 
and um, I don't want to buy up the disposable ones because I, th- I think there's a shortage of them. So and you just I'd, wash them. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm do what we're gonna do is we're gonna use those those. It's almost like the gloves you wash dishes with. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I'll use those. I have those as work. Gloves. And then I have a bag in my car, like a like a paper bag that's designated specifically for the gloves. So when I come up, when I get to my car, I you know open the trunk, I take them off, I put them in the bag, and then when I get home, what I do is I take the gloves and I wash them. With hot soap and water, and then I wipe down obviously where I touch the. But yeah, you don't. What you don't want to do is wear the gloves and then go in your car and touch everything. Believe it or not. So here's what's interesting: yeah. the oils on your skin, the natural oils on your skin, actually have a little bit of an antibacterial, antivirus property. Latex actually stores viruses longer. Wow. So if you wear latex gloves, touch a bunch of COVID, and yeah, then go touch a bunch of, of shit, yeah. you're worse than if you used your own hands. That's you know, crazy. You know what I mean? And then the masks, that's the other yeah. one. It's like people put the masks on, and then they're constantly touching their mask yeah. to adjust it. And then infecting themselves all over again. Yeah. No. W- one cool thing, though, I saw that there was this kid that came up with a cool invention for people that have to wear masks and, like, you know, health providers. Because, at, you know, at the end of the day, like, it puts a lot of pressure on the ears, and it really yeah. digs into it. And so, like... There's this this piece at the back that has uh it's like it's basically like it looks kind of like a, a ladder basically you could hook a little bit higher up so it actually takes a lot of pressure off of the ears and off of you know certain like contact points which that's, was brilliant that's awesome the main reason they say that the the the, the masks protect is because it it keeps you from spreading. I was going to say, it's more, it makes more sense for someone who has it potentially or has a cough yeah. or something like that to keep you from coughing on right. somebody Right, and else. the reason why they're recommending, one of the main reasons why I think they're recommending that now that people wear them is because there's so many people without any symptoms yeah. that it's better if lots of people just wear them. Because you're less likely just to spread, you know, if you do have the the virus. Well, watching that one video, I kind of sent you guys. Like, it had me a little bit more alarmed about like going into bathrooms because of of you know the the, the spread of of uh, actually like the fecal yes. matter stuff that 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 gets like normal stuff that like you know you you're kind of grossed out about, but like you don't like account for. Like that is a major source of of contaminating. Yeah, you guys stop tickling buttholes now. I got stop. <laughs> <laughs> this is really cramping my style. Yeah, you yeah. might get the COVID. Anyway, <laughs> have you guys? heard of uh, some of these conspiracy theories around oh Co- god I've seen bro so i got many. i got a couple uh favorites um so one that's Ooh. going around right now is that all the symptoms and shit like that that is going around is because of the 5g towers yes i saw that, that one the, which is so silly it's wow. so so stupid and i then, forgot all about that and stuff. then the other one is that that it was an engineered virus that is going is uh, that they put out into the world so that world governments can create this like new world order or whatever I need to. Re- I want to remind people how just dude. That's an old one. The, I know. The more people that need to be in on a conspiracy, the <laughs> the, the the lower the odds are that it's a real conspiracy. Right. Could you imagine the amount of people that would have to be in on a freaking plan like that? Yeah. You're talking uh, about yeah. countries that don't get along to begin with, and now we're going to organize. Yeah. Hey, let's all just not yeah, tell anybody. All fighting for information, yeah. and then yeah. doctors and nurses Spies and spies. Yeah, and all that. it's yeah. like it's like no. Everybody, calm down. It's probably. You know, what's that? It's what do they say? Exactly what they say it is. Yeah. What do they say? If, if there's hoofs in the sand, it's a horse, not a zebra. You know, like oh, the more heard likely that before that. Yeah. That's a new one to yeah, me. Jessica okay. tells me that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> how, now, you of all people are probably the most paranoid out of all of us sure, for sure. We sure. talked. We were just talking about this off air before we got in. Like, you know, how do you how do you keep all that in check for yourself? I know you were talking about some of the woo woo stuff you were doing before, but. What's your kind of like your daily routine to keep, when you? I'm sure yeah, you. How re- much news can you really consume? Yeah, because I've actually shut down a lot of the consumption of news at this point. For yeah, me. I'm like so over that. Well, so um, I, I look at actual numbers and I compare it to other numbers so I can gain perspective. But sometimes what I have to do is I have to uh, work through the physical uh, symptoms of anxiety before I could get there. So if, if you've ever been anxious before about something, whether it's a an event like this one, or you know, maybe in, in the past you, you had someone that was sick or losing a job or whatever, you know that the you can get these physical signs of anxiety where your hands get clammy, uh, you maybe your heart beats a little bit, maybe you feel frozen to where you're sitting down and you kind of just feel like you can't do anything. So those physical signs of anxiety can create a, a feedback loop where you have mental stress, physical stress, and the physical stress causes you to feel more mental stress. And so sometimes what you need to do is you need to break the cycle. 
Um, so positive feedback loop, it's like when you have a microphone and you put it in front of a speaker. The microphone picks up the sound from the speaker. Speaker spits it out. Now it picks it up, and then you get that, you know? Yeah. yeah. So break the cycle. And so sometimes what I need to do is break up the – the, the, or interrupt the physical signs of anxiety. That's when I go smoke a joint. So that well, so that's actually not <laughs> that, that, that works. That's actually an example of, of one way to break it up, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, except that would make me way more anxious. Um, exercise is one of them. Meditation is another one. Um, and speaking of cannabinoids, THC makes me can make me more anxious and paranoid if I'm in my head. But the other cannabinoids like CBD and you know, like like Ned. Ned is you know has no almost no THC, but it's got the other cannabinoids that calm me down. So I've been using it. I, I've never used it this much. Well, I you use got, it daily. You got me. Yeah. You got me to do that, and I'm pretty consistent with that. Almost any time that I decide I'm going to smoke, I just go walk over and I first do a dropper of the Ned first, dude. It, it's because it, you you were the one that very effective. That got, it, well, it mitigates the paranoia, right? Well, it's and it's the ratio, right? The ratio mm-hmm. of CBD to THC. When you have like a strain that is, and and I prefer. I've talked many times about this that I I prefer to smoke it, and when I do that, I'm you know at the mercy of whatever the ratio of CBD to THC that the strain is. And most of the ones that I mm-hmm. would purchase or get are, you know, higher THC, lower CBD. And Sal was the one that w- when we first met a long time ago, uh, before the podcast started, that would tell me that he would always have a one-to-one ratio. It's hard to find strains that are that way. Mm-hmm. So what I just do is w- anytime that I'm about to smoke a strain that I know uh, is a higher THC, lower CBD. I just walk over. I have that, and it does. It team. It, I because even though it doesn't affect me the same way, where it makes me feel super anxious, there is definitely if I have like a really strong sativa. Uh, if there's ever a time that will make me feel a little anxious or, par- or paranoia a little yeah. bit, um, that will happen from like a really strong sativa. I'll notice that. So I just go over and I have the the net with it. Totally mitigates. No, that. dude, it's it's super effective. Like, and again, I don't use it. I normally don't use it daily um, uh, because I don't suffer from, you know, I don't have inflammation. I don't have my gut is really healthy right now, so I'm not using anything for that necessarily. And I'm not normally an you know an anxious person. So this is something I'm working on right now. So what I do is when I get home uh, from work, um, I'll go and I'll do a dropper full and it takes about to get the full effects. I'll put it under my oh, tongue. An hour. So, yeah, about 30 minutes to an hour. Yeah. And I, if it's such a big difference. And then what it does is it, because it brings the physical feeling of it. Now my body feels relaxed. It's easier for me to go and look at data and actually be put things in perspective. Cause it's scary when you look at the news. the scary thing is this, uh, when you read the news and you read individual cases mm-hmm. or, or sp- stories that will always cause problems. Like if you read the, uh, one story about a kid who got COVID and died or about how terrible symptoms for one person, it feels so scary, but you got to look at the the actual numbers, compare it to the actual numbers of other things, put things in perspective, be objective, but it's hard to do that when you feel physically tense. So it's like I do that and then it uh, brings me down. And so I've been using it uh, pretty much uh, every single day. I, you know, I I try and always balance like for the information. I I try and look at you know the you know one far one direction, one far the other, and that like I never like get caught in like reading the same perspective mm. of of mm-hmm. the information because right now there's this definitely a clear line of people on one side who oh my God, this is a complete conspiracy. It's bullshit. This is ridiculous. And then there's the other side. Oh my God, this is the scariest thing we've ever seen in our lifetime. It'll be talked about forever. And this is who, you know, everyone, they're praying on their knees every single night. Like, so there's definitely these, these two extremes. And so I, I always read both sides and you know, the, the, the thing that I think I take from both sides is this, the, the, the people that are scared to death. Listen, the, the precautions that you take, I think, are, are are very, very smart and responsible. Everybody should be doing that. Like, why wouldn't we do that? It doesn't sure. matter if we have a chance right now by sheltering in place, by, you know, wearing gloves when you can, by limiting the amount of people you're talking to. If you are talking to someone, you're keeping your safe distance. All those things, I think, are very responsible and smart. And if you care about people and humanity, I think you should be doing. And that's the responsible thing. And then there's the other side that talks about like numbers. And when you read something like, you know, I think we all, I think Justin sent this over, or I don't remember who sent this over first, uh, but it would talked about the total infectious diseases that people have died from this last year is like 3 million. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you, it, when you read something that's, like that's, that. That's what helps me. If I look at the numbers and I go, okay, it puts in perspective, Yeah, you know, what's going on. Not saying that this isn't something we should be careful for, but it's not, uh, I, I'm, I'm overly afraid. 
I'm right. overly, and it's not, it's, it's changing my behaviors in ways that will make me less healthy. Right. Because of all the stress. And that's and what fear. you have to be careful of. Yeah. Cause there's the, the going either end is, is almost, is almost stupid on yeah. both sides. Yeah, I don't yeah. care which one. If you're the person who's so freaked out about this, like the anxiety that you're causing on yourself and the stress that you're potentially causing yep. on yourself and those that are around you, probably very unhealthy. If you're on the other side where you're an idiot and you're just like, oh, fuck mm -hmm. it, I'm going to keep going out with everybody. Okay. You're an idiot too. And you're now you're in endangering other people. Yeah. So the two extremes, I think, are are, are really dangerous to people right yeah. now. I think it takes self-awareness to know where you are. And then, uh, you know, depending on where you're at, that de that'll that determine the things you should do to help yourself. So if you're on the anxiety side, then uh, make it a daily practice to, to work on that. If you're on the, uh, you know, I don't care, everybody, whatever. Actually, you know, here's the thing. A lot of the people on the conspiracy side are, side are the anxious people because they're so anxious that this is a conspiracy that we're – you know, that it, the governments are planning to, you know, take over and there's going to be this forced mass, you know, vaccination and or, you know, they're, they're doing this is a lie. Like that's another form of anxiety, fear and, and paranoia. Yeah. You yeah. know, so speaking of uh, uh, here's some positive news. Do you know what might actually help uh, treat uh, the coronavirus? Hmm. Boners. <laughs> yeah. Finally. Well, indirectly. I mean, Pornhub has been on is yeah. onto that no, for sure. Indirectly, they're finding yeah. that uh, nitric oxide boosters, Uring. that nitric oxide boosters like Viagra, uh, actually may help uh, people survive when they have really bad uh, coronavirus symptoms because the is boost in nitric oxide the, increases oxygen through the blood, helps oh, people, wow. and helps them heal. And so they're actually there was a they're actually looking at <laughs> treating. You gotta stay hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got to keep pumping your can way. We, can we make a shirt? <laughs> stay hard out there, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay stay fight, fight the good fight. You Hashtag imagine, stay you're, hard. Hey, yeah. you imagine you're laying in the, in the- Full attention. You're laying- See, this would be, this, especially this would be me if I was like a single you know, kid. If I was in the hospital with COVID, yeah. you know, I'm like, oh, I'm dying or whatever. Nurse gives me yeah. like a bunch of Viagra. This will help you. I get a boner. I would totally be like, hey- yeah. <laughs> this might be my last my <laughs> yeah, sure. day. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Do you think you could take really care of this? Feeling over the here? greatest. It, it's really. It hurts. Yeah. I just like. <laughs> I just like starting a stay hard thing. I think that'd be a hilarious yeah. campaign right there. Podcast yeah. hard, stay hard, stay hard out there. Don't be soft. Uh, don't be <laughs> did, you, did you guys see what? Uh, now this is ridiculous. Now we have. I we, for, can't believe we didn't bring this up. I saw it like uh, I, I want to say almost a week ago. Now, the new Quest. Uh, water seltzer and protein alcohol drink no no shut yes. up Man, everybody's trying to get on this game yes an alcohol drink with protein in it yes that's what? disgusting <laughs> what well yeah. it's like combining two of the biggest fads right now it's it's brilliant and ridiculous at the same time like right now every i mean every major uh you know beverage brand has hopped on to the all the know. guys named chatter what, what is it called what, what's it what is it seltzer what's Tanner. it what's it called seltzer hard alcohol? seltzer hard yeah, hard yeah, yeah, seltzer yeah. whatever yeah. It is that the definition of yeah, what it's that like the white claws and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah yeah right is that the definition of how you say okay so, so the hard seltzer is becoming like every beverage you know uh maker yeah, it's is, taking over all beer uh, the yes, whole beer market yeah they're all they're all doing it right now and so Quest came out with their version of uh, alcohol, and it has ten grams of protein in, in in it. Also, interesting. You know what it makes? You know what that's going to turn into? So yeah. alcohol so dumb fucks up your gut anyway. Let's throw some fucking yeah. process, some protein farts on top of that and see what right. happens. End of the night, you take a girl home. You've had five of them. You know what I mean? You've had five of these of these hard drinks with with hella protein. You take a girl home. You're like, yeah, we're gonna. And then, oh, the, you oh, know what on. though? The truth is, it's gonna crush. What do you want to bet? Yeah. Bang will follow them. Yeah. With I mean, the creatine version. It will. It will. Yeah, <laughs> creatine, protein, and alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Just because you're getting hammered doesn't yeah. mean you have to not get, get gains. Get, get gains. laid. <laughs> yes. Get drunk. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I, I feel like I could see the commercials now. <laughs> I feel like it. I mean, it's. Uh, Tell me though, if you're, if you're somebody, I, we know. I mean, Justin, you're a White Claw fan. I mean, I, I am. I, I know a lot of people <laughs> that would would be like, but hey, be. I was shirt I was gonna drink some of these anyways. May as well have the one. There you are, Doug. Just pull them up right now. There they are. Like, Hard ten, protein seltzer. Hard protein. Yeah, see the protein. Okay, so I tried a protein water. And that was like a thing for like two minutes. And it was just like chalky, disgusting fucking water. Like how do they get around 
adding like protein powder. If in you're that. if you're drinking alcohol and you're thinking and you're also trying to hit your protein you're not targets, trying to make good decisions at, already at the same time. That's not yeah. That's just not a making great, low calorie. That was the big watch win it, with it. Watch it turn into like one of the most popular post workout drinks, dude. People are no so yes, so dude. Think dumb. about it. Just shoot <laughs> insulin up. You get 10, 10 grams of protein at the same time. Get a little buzz too because you're all freaking completely depleted. Make it taste like gummy bears. It's a home run, yeah, dude. T- watch. You're gonna get a. I, I, could you just, I, get, I can't imagine the parties that are going to have this at it. Uh, bro. Yeah. Hey, bro. <laughs> Dude, bro. Dude, <laughs> give me a 12-er of the quiz. Yeah. Protein. Bro, last night we got, we got so smashed, but I had 100 grams of protein. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good thing. Gross. <clears throat> Gains. All right, our first question is uh. from More Jojo. What type of lifter do you think is having the easiest time adjusting to at-home workouts? Oh, that's a good question. It is. That's so a JoJo, that's baby. a fun one to speculate. It on. is because I've had so I've seen several questions that are similar to this. Like, who do you think is having a better time? Bodybuilder, powerlifter, CrossFit, yeah, CrossFitter. So like, I think that you have to, I think you first have to. We have to separate the what we're like. What do you mean by easiest time? Right, either mentally or physically. Right. So I think mm. uh, if you're a bodybuilder or a powerlifter, I think they they go into this with an advantage. Right. You probably have a lot of muscle mass on you, so you can afford to lose some of it. Right. So you probably go in with the greatest advantage. But then I would be, I would say that they probably are the hardest mentally right now. They're probably freaking out and having the hardest time. Not having I their feel like gym. crossfitters are having the hardest time because they can't like you <laughs> yeah. know. Oh, of course, that's tell so- all their friends, dude. I totally did it in like <laughs> under five minutes. Where are you? Nobody gives a shit. You're, You're right. right at home by yourself. I think I, okay. I agree with you. I think crossfitters are probably struggling the most. That thing is such a community driven <laughs> uh, sport. That's a good point. totally murfed. Uh, you know, like in four point nine. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. You're you know, right. You're you know, right. I that saw, is having the hardest time. I, I saw a meme that cracked me up. It said that uh, powerlifters don't even know that there's a shutdown. They just they're still resting between <laughs> sets. Hundred <laughs> percent, dude. That's yeah. so accurate. Uh, you know. Okay, so here's the type of lifter that I think is going to have the easiest time. The one that uh, does the best job of accepting the circumstances. That's the truth. So right, what, right. whether you're a bodybuilder, a power lifter, uh, Olympic lifter, CrossFitter, you know, whatever, the person who is you know has is is having the the easiest time accepting the circumstances and transitioning to other forms of exercise. I would like to think that's a mind pump listener. I would like to think if you've been with us for a really long time, we've made the case for no matter what modality you gravitate towards, that there's tons of value in learning to move in and out of all types of modalities. And here, this is just a forced reason for you to transition right now, right? We've all now- Got to be adaptable. Our our gyms have shut down. And even if you weren't a big fan of body weight type of training- you're like, well, I, you know, I've been telling myself I need to transition. That mind pump's been telling me for a long time that I should transition out of my, you know, powerlifting or bodybuilding phase that I love to go back to all the time. This now makes a great excuse for me to do that. And the people that I think that are reframing the situation as an opportune time for them to work on either body weight or mobility type of training and are seizing that. I think are for sure having the best time in this situation. I completely agree. And I think, look, if you are if you were somebody that was so in love with your form of training that you never moved out of it, first off, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with really enjoying a modality and you really don't want to veer out of it. So you power lift, you always power lift, or you're a bodybuilder, you always bodybuild or whatever. Nothing necessarily wrong with that. But remember this one fact right here. Remember that novelty gets the body to respond. It just does. I don't care what type of training that you do, Mm -hmm. switching things up can oftentimes cause some pretty positive changes to your body. So now you have this, this, you're forced into a little bit of novelty. Now, is your max squat numbers going to go down and your max deadlift numbers going to go down because you're doing body weight stuff? Yes, but you may increase your stability. You may have significant improvements in your mobility and remember this muscle uh, you know muscle memory is a real thing just because you're not you know lifting the way you always do but you're still staying active you go back to the gym when things finally open up and you go back to the gym not only will you see your uh, whatever you were doing before you'll get back to it very quickly but because now you've added a new element to your training like maybe mobility for example you may surpass some of your previous uh, plateaus like i know I know for a fact, I'll give you a great example. Here's a good example. I love heavy compound barbell movements. I love squats, deadlifts, overhead presses, rows, 
you know, uh, bench presses. Those are my favorite exercises. I love training in low reps. And for a long time, I trained to see how how much I could possibly lift. Well, at one point, I had to face the reality that uh, pushing any further was causing me pain. I had SI joint pain in my low back. I had, you know, some some issues with my left to right balance. So what I did is I dedicated some time to unilateral training. Now, that means that my weight went way down. So instead of squatting with three or 350 pounds, I'm doing, you know, controlled lunges with 100 pounds on my back. But I did this for a few months. I dedicated unilateral training for about a few months. Then when I went back to my favorite form of exercise, yes, it did take me a few weeks to get back to the previous strength that I had, but then I went past it. I went past yeah. my old plateaus. So you have to reframe. So the lifter that that looks at this, it looks at everything and accepts it and says, okay, I can't go to the gym. What can I do? And you know what? The same fervor and passion that I had towards the way that I trained before, I'm going to apply that to this other form of exercise. Mobility is a great example. And mobility will benefit 99% of those of you listening uh, are going to benefit from really, really good mobility training. As a bodybuilder, you'll have better controlled ranges of motion, which are going to give you better muscle growth and better pumps. As a power lifter, reduced risk of injury. And because your weak links are not going to be as weak as they were before, you're probably not going to hit the same rev limiter that you hit before. So this, this could be a very good thing. Mm. Well, minus all, you know, the lack of machines, I feel like bodybuilders are going to be, you know, in the best mm. situation because you I mean you can walk around in your bikini briefs. <laughs> you know where the best lighting is? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you that's just go in front of a mirror and do your fucking thing. <laughs> I can't. Like, you're great. You're, like, it's it's powerful. It's yeah. great. I, I, I think about, like, powerlifters doing, like, reps, you know, body weight yeah. stuff. Like, oh, my God, it's 15 reps. <laughs> yeah. Boo! You know? <laughs> <That's> too, <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> it's too much it's hurling. No, this is this is a mindset thing. You know, one hundred percent. You know, yeah. part of what uh, the okay. So for years we we we've been familiar with you know corrective exercise and mobility and you know uh, foam rolling and all these tools to help improve uh, range of motion and stuff, right? And work on your dysfunction. Well, it wasn't until I reframed my goals and said, okay, I'm going to really take this seriously where my entire focus was around mobility. Did I see the like huge change? So I had a lot of people that have messaged me about like, oh man, how did you get that depth in your squad? And how did you, you know, I've been trying to work on the combat stretch and I feel like my ankle mobility, it'll never be there. I'm, I'm Mark Bell. I know tagged, I was tagged in one of his posts recently <clears throat> where he doesn't think he could ever get down into a ass to grass squad. Just people, you start to believe that you're just, your structure won't allow you to get there. And it's not true. It's just, you probably have never put the same effort towards mobility as you have powerlifting. And guarantee mm -hmm. if somebody like our buddy Mark actually applied all all the mobility drills the same way that he has put effort towards his powerlifting because he's an incredible powerlifter. If you just switch that to like all like you totally like said, I don't care about powerlifting. Now all I care about yep. is becoming the most mobile guy. He would become extremely mobile. And it it it, it required me to do that after mm -hmm. bodybuilding. And I went from being all I cared about is how I look and the pump and building a more muscle, more muscle, more muscle to, okay, I have to completely shut that off. That's not a priority right now. It doesn't mean that I don't want muscle. It doesn't mean that I don't want to not lose muscle. It just means that I don't care about it. It's not my focus. My focus is what I'm measuring my success week over week is, am I gaining a greater range of motion? Am I getting better at these mobility drills? And so this is a great time for people to reframe their goals and put a lot of energy and effort on an area like Sal said that 99% of you will benefit greatly from. Yeah, and one of the big challenges I know is that people who are, you know, gym fanatics don't really know. They might have figured out how to program a workout for themselves in the gym because they've been doing it for so long. They don't know how to program a workout without equipment. Yeah. This is very this would this would have been me you know, years ago, if you, if this happened to me at the age of, you know, 20 and I didn't have a gym, I'd be like, okay, pushups, pull-ups, uh, body weight squats. Like, all right, what else do I do? I don't know what else right. to do. I wouldn't know about, you know, tension, uh, positions. I wouldn't know about mobility. I wouldn't know about all the different angles that you can use with just body weight, how to slow reps down, how to make them feel more intense. I wouldn't know how to, how to utilize bands 
and I wouldn't know how to program it all together because my experience was in the gym. So if, if you need programming, if you need a good workout that's well put together, we've decided to continue the half off sale of maps anywhere because, uh, you know, they've extended the stay at home orders. Gyms are closed longer than we thought. Initially we thought we would just put it on sale for, uh, you know, the month of March, but we're going to keep it on sale. So if you need a program like that, you there, the code is, uh, white and then the number 50 without a space, uh, follow that. That's good workout programming. All you need are bands and a broomstick. Next question is from Dwayne Nill. <clears throat> Is blood flow restriction safe during strength training? Oh, I'm glad whoever who picked this Ooh, question. BFR. I, did, I did. This is a good a good question because I actually, Sal, I wanted you to talk a little bit about uh did you see what Ben Greenfield posted recently? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. I, I did. thought that was really interesting and uh, what a cool I, I don't know why this didn't cross. Same uh, here. It uh, didn't even click for me. No. It, that. it didn't. And I and I, I watched it, I thought, man, that fucking makes a lot of sense right now. It yeah. does. So what he was saying is just to to while training at home during this period of time. Uh, to reduce uh, overall intense uh, inflammation in the body. But, okay, how do I um, keep the inflammation low for my workouts but still send the loud muscle-building signal? So we talked about some techniques, and one of them was blood flow uh, restricted tr restriction training. By the way, we did uh, – we have a guide on it um, that talks about it. And I think, if I'm not mistaken – didn't we do a YouTube video where we talk about it a little well, bit? Well, in the well? guide, it has it. It has the video. Yeah, okay. yeah. And, and I think we might have done some YouTube stuff too, but for sure in the guide, you have the, the video on how to do it. So if you're at home and you have like light weights, you have a light pair of dumbbells, 10s, 15s, 5s, or maybe you just have water jugs and you're trying to figure out how do I get the same muscle building signal out of this light weight that I would at the gym with 30 or 40 pound dumbbell Got or whatever. Jugs. You, you do something called blood flow restriction, and studies show that this is legit. And so basically the way it works, and it's mainly for the limbs, uh, but you use like a knee wrap, and let's say I'm going to work out my arms, I would tie the knee wrap around my arm above my bicep, kind of near my armpit, and I would tie it around tight enough to where I could feel the that I'm restricting some blood flow, but not so tight that I lose feeling in my hands. Then I do curls with that, and what that does is it, is it prevents – the muscle from getting the byproduct, the waste byproducts out that it normally would pump out when you're working out. So you get this buildup of waste products, this buildup of uh, of blood. You all of a sudden, ten pounds starts to become. Trust me, try this out for yourself. You'll see. At first, it's like, oh, this is oh, easy. It burns. Then all of a sudden, you start losing strength. It gets crazy burned. The pump is the pump is distorting. It's literally the the most insane pump you'll ever get in your life. And studies show that this actually sends a decent muscle building signal. I mean, it's up there. It's not quite up there with heavy lifting, but it's it's up there. Um, and it's something that you could do on your own at home. And I think right now, this would be something to utilize, especially if you have a lot of muscle right. and you want to keep a lot it's of muscle. Also, I think that one of the reasons why he was making the case was, you know, when we when you do like a hard lifting training session, um, it, that's a major, it, it's a major stress on the body. That's what causes the response for you to build and grow muscle. But it also puts you in a more vulnerable state, right? So if we if we're trying to keep a very strong immune system right now, and that's one of our concerns is staying healthy and not catching the virus, or if you do that, you can fight through it well. Right. Then hammering yourself in your home gym and stressing the body during this time is maybe not the most smart thing that you could do. And when you do the BFR training, you get this great stimulus and it doesn't hammer your immune system right. the same way because it doesn't put as much stress on the overall body. Is that correct? Right, right, right. So um, that's that's 100% correct. That was his uh, – oh, yeah, so we do. We have it up on our, our occlusion. Okay, so the, the title of the video is Occlusion Training. Um, and you can find that. And gosh, you know what? Every time I look at these videos, <laughs> look at these that, youngins. I don't understand yeah. why we're at why we're the aging. Deal, it's like dude. we're in a time warp. Yeah. You know, I was like, what was that two years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Three, two years ago. Why does it look like ten years ago? <laughs> 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 I don't understand. So much wisdom in here. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, occlusion training is definitely something that I think um, you 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 could take advantage of right now if you have really light dumbbells. You could do this with body weight training. So you could include your arms. And do push-ups uh, or dips for your triceps. Um, you could occlude your legs and do walking lunges or body weight squats. And I'm telling you right now, like let's say what if let's say I normally would do 10, 10 curl, 10 reps, sorry, with 35 or 40 pound dumbbells. I after a couple sets with tens, I'm doing like eight. Yeah. And it's that intense. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy of a pump. So 
Next question is from LTDXS. Is inserting isometric holds into the middle of a workout effective? Oh, isometric training fell out of favor, not because of lack of effectiveness. I really think it fell out of favor because lots of machines and pieces of equipment were being invented mm -hmm. and gyms can't sell isometric training because there's not really equipment, lots of equipment for it. But if you go back, some of the best training advice you'll ever get when it comes to building muscle is the pre-steroid bodybuilding, muscle building era. So when you go back and you look at guys like Eugene Sandow, Eugene Sandow you know, John Grimmick, Steve Reeves, um, you know, these guys before steroids really became a big thing, they figured out how to maximize muscle building and strength. Um, without, they didn't even have supplements. They didn't even take supplements like, you know, creatine or protein powders. It was all about their training and nutrition. They were the first that really figured out how vital the central nervous system was in the whole process of getting stronger. Dude, isometric training was a big, so isometric training was such a big part of the routine when, if you read comic books up until I'd say the 80s, and I have old comic books, because when, when I got into them in the 90s, mm -hmm. I'd buy old ones. In the back of them, was these Charles Atlas yes, ads I for remember those. and it was you know like some dude on well, you know some skinny guy on the beach with his girlfriend and then some big dude kicks sand in his face and he gets up and gets pumped and then, and then he goes and gets Charles Atlas's routine gets all jacked and goes beats him up but the routine was actually a hundred percent based off of uh, isometrics mm -hmm. and they called it dynamic uh, tension um, isometrics work. The Soviets used it quite a bit to help them dominate weightlifting during the, the Cold War. Um, it, it it doesn't just give you strength in the position that you're you're training because it's you're frozen with isometric. It also gives you strength in out, ranges of motion outside of that. It doesn't damage yeah, the muscles like that much. It's 15 to 20 degrees further. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. also It's also extremely safe and smart when you have clients. That's a big factor. So there's actually companies now, there's brands that have completely uh, branded themselves around uh, I, in fact, there's a there's a, a a company or a brand called uh, Slow Zone, I believe is what it's called, mm -hmm. and it targets the you know advanced age, and it's like ex isometric and extremely and, and slow movement centric, for the safety. Yeah. yeah, for and just by creating tension, holding, intensifying intrinsically, moving really really slow or holding still in position. And there's enough research to support the benefits of that. And like you said, it's just, it's fallen out of favor. It's just one of those things that isn't very sexy. Uh, it's, it, it isn't it's very- hard to see what's happening too when you see someone do an isometric position. Like, right. Where yeah. are they tensing up? Where is this tension going? Yeah, it's, it, it requires a lot of coaching and, and a lot of, uh, yeah, like you, your understanding of what you need to produce with that. And so to be able to then add more effort to a position that you're in. And I think that, you know, there's even some yoga practices where you're in these poses where you actually now you're really trying to like, yes, you know, dig into that with your with your mus muscles and really feel your way through that mm -hmm. and get more tense uh, with that. But it's it's all it has to come from within, which again to the safety point is you can you can really make these things intense, but you can also back off at any second. Yeah. So it you know allows that kind of uh, uh, versatility. It's also it. great for, you know, I used to love to use it in coaching like clients is to in the middle of a rep of any exercise, whether it be a squat, even a basic bicep curl or a shoulder press is I would do a light enough weight that I know they could hold it in that position. So we do a light weight, they go through it, and I'd freeze them somewhere in the movement. Mm. And then I'd actually, then I go over and manually like adjust their body and then tell them, you should be feeling this here, thinking about your core being drawn in here, engaging your glutes, and like really get them to understand like these are all the things that you should be thinking about through this movement. Such a cool tool to use for coaches and trainers, not just for clients and, and seeing results. It told, and you know what's funny to me is that in the 60s and 70s, because bodybuilders actually do, they don't talk about isometric training, but they actually do a lot of isometric yeah. training. Poses. They pose, right? So bodybuilders will practice their front double bicep, back double bicep, rear lat spread, and their you know, ab shot and side chest and all that stuff. And when you're posing on stage, you have to your whole body is being displayed. So front double bicep, they're not just looking at your biceps, they're looking at everything. So they have to you have to learn how to tense everything up and smile. So you have to develop this incredible amount of control. And if you've never tried this, try this. 
Try flexing like a bodybuilder where you're tensing up every muscle. Oh, yeah. Tr- try not to look like an idiot and hold that pose for 15 seconds. Yeah, and try, try and flex your calves, quads, abs, and biceps and keep your face normal. Yeah. It's and, not and hold easy. It, and hold it for 10 seconds. Yeah, it's not yeah. easy. No, not at all without shaking and Hi, looking Mom. like it. Yeah, anyway, yeah. so bodybuilders do this all the time. And Arnold, in those days, they this was a part of their routine. So what he used to do, so back in the 70s, cardio wasn't something that bodybuilders did a lot of. They just didn't. They lifted weights. They dieted, but what they would throw in to their routine as they got closer to competition was posing, mm. lots and lots of posing. So Arnold would start to do 30 minutes of posing, 45, and he would work up to two hours of posing every single day as he got closer to competition, obviously burning a ton of calories. And if you look at Arnold in the, in the in, when he competed in the 70s, he was very lean. He was looked at least healthy. He looked healthy. He wasn't as shredded as they are today, but the, the drugs that they took back then were were different, but he looked healthy at least on stage. So this is something you should definitely incorporate into your routine, especially if you're stuck at home. This is actually a, a big component in our at-home program maps anywhere as well. And we put them in there specifically because you don't need equipment and they're very effective. Next question is from Konichiwa. <laughs> Can some foods that are prepared from scratch at home be considered processed foods? Oh, let's talk about processed foods right now. You know, I, I want to say before we get into this that uh, processed foods we all we've been we always rail against it because they 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 promote overeating. They're probably why we have an obesity ed- epidemic to be to begin with, um, because as the processed food you know started flooding the market, obesity went up. It just makes you eat more. Um, they do a good job of doing that. They're engineered to do that. But there's some value to processed food. Um, one of them is their shelf life. And right now, I think that's that's actually a good thing. Yeah, thank God for that, right? Right, because I think if you're trying to not go to the grocery store as often right now, like right now, going to the grocery store is, a, is, a, is an ordeal. Mm-hmm. I, gotta, I go there. There's a the line now because they're only letting so many people in there. You're wearing your mask, your gloves, or whatever. Then they let you in, and everything's slow, and... You come back, you wipe everything. It's like a two-hour type of deal, and you, you you don't want to be around a lot of people. So right now, processed foods have a little bit of value because you could buy a box of something, and it's going to last uh, a long time. So that being said, okay, here are the negatives of processed foods. They're hyper palatable, but that's combined with extreme convenience. That's what makes them dangerous. If you you know buying a, a cake at the grocery store is different than baking a cake at home. Baking a cake at home, the convenience factor is cut out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yes, you still have a cake at the end that tastes really good and you want to eat a lot of, but it took me two hours yeah. to make. Yeah. So it's, one is built with love, one is built <laughs> with robot hate. Yes, you know, I, for human beings, it's it's way less common to find someone who's obese because they they make all of their processed foods from scratch. Like I don't know anybody that eats too many potato chips. Bro, you just green light everybody baking a cake, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good time. Hey, I'll tell you what, there's some fun in baking right now. Well, you know, I, I think that um For you know, sure. we were talking about this off air that, you know, a lot of the messaging around, of course, you know, the the, the massive pivot of, of trainers, everyone's figuring at home everything, at home workouts and trying to stay on their goals and you know, I think one of the things that, and like you said, we we rail against processed foods, but I also think that this is not the time to be trying to make gains. Like this is not or get ripped. Yeah, or exactly, or you know, if you're going to have, if you're going to enjoy food and, and enjoy company and do things like this and not stress about, uh, there's already enough stress going on about just going to the grocery store, like you said. So uh, I, I don't think I would be beating myself up about having a, a processed food. Uh, right now, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't do that anyways. I most certainly wouldn't do it in in this this time. Um, I also probably would limit how many cakes I bake at home too, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but my point you is, it takes careful. It that. takes time, you know. Like yeah, you, yeah. you know, spend three hours baking something. That's a barrier. That's a barrier yeah. between you and the food. If you mm-hmm. buy it, and it's already there. It's the extreme convenience. Well, and it all, and it also could it also feeds into stuff that you talk a lot about and promote is that baking that cake is an opportunity for you potentially to be in the kitchen with your spouse totally. or your child, and you're helping them, and it's a whole event out of it during a stressful time like this when we're all at home. Completely, totally. Uh, if I had a client talking to me right now and said that they wanted to do that, I would definitely not shame them away from uh, doing something like that. The value of that 
uh, I think far out exceeds what you know negative calories you potentially are going to yes, consume. Yes, and I do want to say this: it's the abuse of things that's the that's problem. Right, that's right. Okay, so and and by the way, exercise and eating clean can be abused too. I know this in the fitness space. I've seen many people who abuse mm-hmm. eating clean. It's called orthorexia, um, and it's a it's an eating disorder. I've seen people abuse exercise, which is supposed to be good for you, but they abuse it to the point where it damages their body. And of course, processed food. And alcohol and things like that can be abused as well. But, you know, I don't want to to discredit the temporary relief. Again, I'm not talking about abuse here, okay? And I'm not talking about a pattern where this becomes your way of, of dealing with problems uh, always. But sometimes the temporary relief that you get from enjoying a glass of wine uh, or having some potato chips because... You've been you're you're stressed. You're stressed yeah. over work and what's going on, or maybe lack of work. And right now, it's okay every once in a while. The the, the problem is when people and the problem is when people judge themselves. Like I just had some potato chips because I'm really stressed out because of what's going on. Even though I'm normally always healthy, then I'm gonna feel bad about it on top about uh, on top of it. That's just adding a layer uh, on top of things. So I, I want to communicate that because I think right now is the time to to say that um, again. It, abuse is the issue, not the occasional, you know, use of these. Well, and I think too, if you're cooking or, you know, baking, cooking anything from scratch and you're using any kind of flour, I mean, it has to be processed, you know, for you to be able to eat it. You're not going to eat like the stock from grains, (laughs) you know, and like be all organic about it. Like it, it needs to be like digestible. So like, again, this whole processed thing, yeah, it. Uh, I mean, it's inevitable. Like it's, it's about being mindful. Yeah, totally. being mindful. It, about that's it. really what it Context is. Context matters. And and look, right now I'm I'm baking uh, with Jessica and the kids because it's it's a great way to connect. So we're, we're baking cookies, and it's not the cookies that no so much I want. Those are great. Mm. It's the process of of baking them. Sometimes you, know? you need a little soul food. That's it. <laughs> and with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides and resources. They're all totally free. You can you can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Justin at Mind Pump Justin, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.